time, we don't use Roman numerals. We use not one, two, three, four. Do you know where these numbers come from? Because they're not oh. invented. No, they don't. No, they don't. In one of the few things in the world the Romans didn't invent. The caves. Not, not the Greeks. Roman, uh, no, them rock men. Was it Africa? Uh, you're, clo you're much closer. It comes from the East. India. They probably come from India, and then they are... That was a lucky guess. A lucky guess, but it was right. Uh, yeah, exactly. They come from India, and they're adopted by Arabs who bring them to Europe about a 1,000 years ago. Right? So they're quite, these numbers are quite recent. What the Romans <coughs> used was something actually much, much more complicated. But you still see this today in almost every clock in a public place. Big Ben has got Roman numbers on. And what I wanted to find out, because you've got a clock face here, is whether we could actually do some basic... And they use it in films, you know, like if you get a sequel. That's, uh, uh, that's books. Right. Yeah, yeah. books. When, it's, when is the book published? Like it's never saw free, it's saw dash dash line on the top. That's right. Of what we're going to do is we are just going to look quickly <coughs> at these Roman numbers so that you will be able to do it. Right? Now, I think you know these already, probably, but you won't know all of them. So we'll start with the simple ones. Don't go from 1 to 10. Oh, my really gosh, good. I just worked out what they are. <laughs> X is 10. That's right. It's a clock face. And then the two lines equals <laughs> 1 each. It's so clock. 10 plus 2 is 12, and then you've got 1 because 1 so clock. One That's right. You see? I'm just reading like a long clock. It's actually it one, two, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what you do, yeah. if you want to say yeah. 1, you put 1 yeah. stroke. Yeah. What do you do for 2, Daniel? For 2, 2 strokes. 2 strokes. And then it's 3 because it's 3 and M, and then 3 must be like a 1 with a V because V must be something. your face do you know where they come from? They yeah. originate probably in your hand. Probably one, two, three, four, five. Three. <laughs> five. 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 The only complicated one, and it's complicated right through the system, is in four here. Instead of doing that, although the Romans did sometimes do that, you usually put a one before the V, say, V minus one. One before the V. That's right. Right. You know this, Judah. That's brilliant. <laughs> right, so that is pretty straightforward. What I want to know is what happens when you, do you think, if you, that's 1 to 12, what do you reckon happens when you get to 20? It's two X's. Two X's, brilliant. Mm, that's not on the clock. <laughs> no, she must have known. I know, is that something? Well, oh, Connor, what did you want to say? Yeah. It is X, yeah. what is 20 going to be? Um, What's 30 going to be then? I don't know. Does anybody know what 50 is? L. Brilliant. So what do you think 40 might be? XL. XL. Brilliant. Who is going to come up and find the number on Beckham's arm? Number 23, yeah. Where the fuck is that? No, go up. No, go up. Right, go right, 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 right. Oh, he's, <laughs> yes, he's got, he's got an ordinary number. Can somebody find the Roman number? It's there. That's right. <laughs> right, this is what Beckham has got on his arm. Eight. Okay. Then it's got what? Hit drum. I haven't finished yet, mate. Oh. Why do you have to It's just a V. And then what? Five. <laughs> Maybe any excuse to touch Beckham. I'm sorry. <laughs> what Beckham has got on his arm is V11, eight, five... Oh, it's mobile number. <laughs> is it? I wonder. Give me Try ringing it. And then he's got <laughs> MMV11. Does anybody know what M is? Um, nine. Really big. No, it's big. Fifty. A thousand. M is a thousand. So what is M N V one one? Million. One thousand. N is a thousand. Yeah. So N and a thousand and seven. Two thousand. Two thousand and seven. Two thousand and seven. Right. Eight five two thousand and seven. It is some. It is some very important day in the life of David Beckham. Which well, his I think baby was born in 2007. So it's probably that, isn't it? One thing that's incredibly difficult in Rome is, is to uh, add up and subtract. And the thing they've got, they didn't invent, and we do, and what makes their number system, if you're a mathematician, this would mean much more to you than it means to me. There's no, there's no zero, there's no naught. 
So Rome doesn't have a sign for zero. What we're now going to see is some Romans actually writing them themselves. Mary, are you doing these drawings? Yes, she is. A they Roman did that, Danielle. <laughs> it's another bit of graffiti from Pompeii. You remember being seen as, you know, Rufus S with the big nose. Quite it's artists, it's right? Rufus. <laughs> what do you think these That's little characters terms. are, actually? Has anybody got any idea? Oh, yeah. Army men, then people with. They're jousters, isn't they? <laughs> You're close, Carl. Well, yeah. swords. Gladiators. Who has seen. Has anybody seen yeah. the movie Gladiator? Yeah. 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 So did I. Gladiator was actually quite lifelike. And what you've got in every town in the Roman <coughs> Empire is you find gladiatorial competitions of guys, you know, you know, the equivalent of David Beckham in the ancient world, in the Roman world, gladiators were celebs, right? They were... <laughs> <laughs> Daniel is looking deeply unconvinced by this. And probably people used to bet on them, but, of course, they were celebrities with a rather short lifespan because... If they lost, right what happened? Yeah, that's right. People said, do you want to kill him or not? Sometimes they got killed. Let's find out how many fights he's had. He's called, he's called Ocean. Okeanus. He's had 15. Is that 18? He's had, that's, he's had X111. How many fights? 30. X111. 13. 13 fights. This guy has had four fights, and this guy one lost. So maybe he didn't ever have any more fights than four. Do you know where gladiators fought? In the Colosseum. They fought in the Colosseum in Rome. Yeah. You've yeah, been so there? Been there well. We are now going to start thinking about Latin language again for the last time. What we're going to do is we're going to read a simple two-line poem written by a guy called... Mercus Valerius and Mertialis. This guy lived about 90 AD. What does AD mean? I know before Christ. It means, it means, it means, after, it means after Christ means and it's also Christ. Latin because it's Anno Domini. He lived in Rome about 90 AD. He actually came from Spain. What this guy Marshall did was he wrote loads and books and books and books of tiny little poems. When the Colosseum was opened, uh, great spectacle um, in about 80 AD. Marshall wrote a whole book of poems saying what great gladiatorial spectacle there had been in the Colosseum. People were put to death on pyres in the arena. It was really, and Marshall commemorated all this, said how great it was. But here we got one little poem which I have chosen because it's pretty easy, but most people would do this after they'd done Latin for about a year. Really right? So we're going to be. So right. I'm going to help you quite right. a lot. It's is a two-line oh. poem, right? Non-amorti. This is your favourite poem. Non-amorti. You're reading it very, very nicely. I'm now going to read it out to you. Do you want to read it all together? Should we read it all together? One, two, three, go. Non amo te sabidi, non possum decore quare, tantum possum decore, non amo te. There's something about loving. Something about loving, right. Now, there's a very funny story attached to this. Come on, you kind of do it. Non amo te. Um, uh, non amot sabidi non possum dicky qua hot possum decur non amo t. It's very hard to know whether we're pronouncing them right it's, it's because nobody possible. speaks it. I, I tell you, there's there's some some hints about how you can pronounce Latin. One is that Greek is still spoken ancient Greek and sometimes you get Latin words written in ancient Greek and that helps you see how it was pronounced but the other way of finding out how people pronounce Latin is looking at ancient spelling mistakes because how do you spell the word what in English w-h-a-t -E. what you find if you go and look at kids kids spelling mistakes is w-o-t well that helps you know if you were to come back in 2000 years time that would help you know that w-h-a-t 
must have been said what. Yeah. Yeah. what one of the things you can do is you can look <coughs> at even more deep down similarities between the languages of Europe what and you, India. They spoke some, some people call, I don't know what they call it, they call it Proto-Indo-European. Known amo te. Can anybody Known think? Known amo te. I don't love you. I don't love you. Really? It means I oh, do not friend. love you, <laughs> Sabidi. And that's, and that, name. that's a man's name. Yeah. I don't I'm love you, Sabidi. I am able to say. <laughs> I am able, I non possum decore. I am not Never. able to say. I'm not I can't tell you why. Quare. I don't love you, Savidis. I can't say why. This only possum decorate. I don't know what it is. I am able to say. Moan amote. I don't know. Brilliant. Brilliant. She goes, I don't she goes, I don't love you in his name. Yeah. And he says, um, I'm not able to say. Say to say why, I think why. But um the only yeah. Oh, that was only able to say I don't love you. Yeah. I'm only Can you do it, Daniel? Yeah. What, read it? Yeah. Can you translate it? Good. I don't love you. Sabidius, that's his name. Yeah, Sabid I don't love you, Sabidius. How do you spell Norman Sabidius if you say Sabidius? It's a short, short word. It looks like a possum. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to... I, I cannot say why. I cannot say why. Something, something, love again. This only, this only, I can. Declare. I can declare. I don't love you. Yeah. Don't yeah. Now I'm going to tell you just to finish this. I'm going to tell you one story about this poem. We've got a guy who's a real tearaway, drunkard, lazy bastard, <coughs> student at Oxford. <laughs> uh, so he goes to the head of his Aye. college, and the guy <laughs> says, <laughs> "I'm going to throw you out, right? I'm going to throw you out because you're such a lazy bastard." Uh, there's only one thing, however, that will let you stay. If you can translate this Latin poem instantly to me, <laughs> you can stay. And the poem that he showed this kid was this poem. Right? He said this poem. He said, you've got to translate it at sight. And he instantly did it. He said, I do not love you, Dr. Fell. The reason why I cannot tell, but this I know, I know oh, full rhyming. well. I do not rhyme. love you, Dr. Fell. This doesn't rhyme, but in English he made it rhyme. Oh. And the guy was so impressed, he let him stay at Oxford. Really? What? So, Just translating what? Latin poetry can get right you into education. End Oxford. of lesson. Moral. Oh,